Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is the newest way to play the world's most complicated children's trading card game, and perhaps the best in terms of official releases. It is available on PC, console, and mobile, free to play, with cross-platform ranked play, and solo stories to play through. It has received some great early feedback based on the accessibility to new and non-paying players, as well as a great representation of how the card game has evolved over time. And here is why you should play Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. The gameplay you'll see in the background here is basically my journey through ranked play. I'm new to the modern style of Yu-Gi-Oh! so I thought I'd show you my learning journey to sort of dispel the stereotype that the card game is hard to learn now. And you'll see that from how I start by making a ton of misplays and steadily get better and improve my deck at the same time. Ranked play is the main matchmaking mode for the game, with special events happening periodically. We also have a table system for playing with friends, but that's not match made, so you'll mainly see games between friends or community run competitions in there. Being based on ranked play may be a turn off for some of you, but I assure you it's really not that bad. The earliest ranks aren't even based on wins, you can advance out of the starter rank just by losing, and the purpose it serves is to pit you against equally inexperienced players as you learn to pilot your deck against another player, which is an experience you can't get in solo play. Even past those beginner ranks, you can't derank by losing, so there's no pressure to perform until you get to the very top tiers. The state of online play is somewhat different to the physical TCG, because the list of cards which are banned or limited is different. Other than this, it's a very good representation of the game. People play meta decks, people play off meta decks, but you'll be able to see a lot of common archetypes like Sky Strikers, which the gameplay in the background mostly is, Drytron, Tri-Brigade, Invokers, Shadol, and more. What you can expect, however, is for people to be able to build these decks to a much more effective or complete degree, because they're not having to substitute cards which would otherwise be far too expensive to buy. This is where me saying it's the best official representation of the TCG in my intro comes from. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! and without the need to drop £50 on a single sheet of cardboard on eBay to be able to be competitive. The solo mode is a great place to start if you're a new player, or returning to the game after a while like I was. The last time I played the TCG was when Synchro Summons were added, and the solo tutorials gave me a pretty good understanding of Xyz and Link Summoning in the first half hour of play. Solo mode is themed around gates, each linking to a specific archetype of cards. You'll get some lore surrounding that archetype, which is great to help you pick your favourites to build from, and many of the gates will give you a structure deck too, which you can take into online play after you finish a certain number of duels. There are two main types of duel in solo play, ones with learned decks, which help you learn that archetype's play style, and ones with your own decks, which let you pit your favourite cards against the AI who actually play quite well. I would definitely recommend you start with solo play, because you can get some great cards as rewards, for example, the Strategy Tutorial Gate teaches you to play by steadily drip-feeding you cards to add to your starter deck, which enable a new level of strategy for you to learn. There are some great staple cards in there too, like Rageki, Monster Reborn, and Reinforcement of the Army, which find their way into a lot of great decks. And they're also ultra-rares, meaning they're expensive to craft and difficult to pull from a pack. One thing I really want to talk about with the gameplay before I move on is the music. I don't know who wrote any of this, but they really went all in trying to make duels feel epic. If you look at any OST video on YouTube, you'll see comments of people getting a sense of actually being a protagonist in their games, with how well the music gels with the gameplay. And in my eyes, that's because it's dynamic to the state of the game. The music reacts to you and your opponent playing your boss monsters, or having your backs against the wall, so let me give you a bit of a demonstration using the Monarch theme. So, the duel starts and this is the music playing. You're going first, you set up a decent board and passed your opponent. Since you went first, you have no idea what deck your opponent is running, and the chaotic chant of the vocals adds to the tension there. On your opponent's turn, they start making their plays, trying to pick apart your board and build their own. They play three on a gate, wipe your protection off the board, and suddenly, they drop their boss monster, the music picks up. You know you're in for a hard time. Your opponent has taken out all of your monsters, left your life points low. You know you've got one turn to pick the game back up. And then turn passes to you. The music picks up again. The game knows you're screwed, you know you're screwed, but the way the music reinforces the tension makes you want to fight back, which is likely where the sense of being a protagonist in the duels that you'll see many comments focusing on has come from. 
Hearing these themes build up and up as the state of the game develops really gets you in the zone, and is a fantastic part of the experience this game gives you. Winning off the back foot with such a climactic theme playing is so rewarding, and even if you lose in this situation, it keeps you coming back for more. The visuals back up the music quite well. It's nothing overboard, but the effects changing based on the monster's attribute, and the summon animations with the boss monsters having additional splash art is pretty nice. Not being overboard on effects isn't a detriment though. The music is distracting enough at the best of times, without having too many flashy effects on the board at once. The performance is great too, I mean it runs on the Nintendo Switch. I adore the Switch as a console, but it's no feat of performance engineering, so running lag free on there means the game must be pretty well optimised. Now the economy of the game, by which I mean how well you can play free to play, what the payout of gems and card packs is like, and how much of an advantage a paying player has. When you first start out the game is incredibly generous. I don't have an exact number, but I think between all the basic missions you get when you start, and the gems you can get from solo mode, you can gather about 10,000 gems. That's enough for 100 packs straight up, but there are also some beginner packs to take advantage of, which give 10 packs and a powerful staple card for a better price. You should 100% buy all of these. You should also buy the battle pass, which is cheap, pays for itself in the gems you get rewarded, and also gives you a ton of crafting materials. Both these recommendations can be bought with the gems you get starting your account, and you will have a ton left over. The packs themselves actually favour the customer to a degree, which is pretty unheard of in this type of game. The reason being that if you pull a super or ultra rare card from a certain archetype, you'll unlock a secret pack for that archetype. This means that you'll be able to pull from that archetype's pool of cards for four of the eight cards in each pack, so half the pack guaranteed. Because of this system, you're able to build a complete competitive deck as a new player without spending any real money. In addition, if you're pulling 10 packs at a time, and you don't get an ultra rare card in that 10 packs, your next 10 pull is guaranteed to have at least an ultra rare card. Ultra rare cards and crafting materials are the most valuable resources in the game for deck building, so this is a fantastic help. You can also access these secret packs by crafting a super or an ultra rare card in the deck builder. Being able to influence the cards you draw from packs means you're going to be able to make much more effective use of your gems, making the game very free to play friendly. So with all of these free to play advantages, what does a paying player get in terms of advantage themselves? Well, the ultra rare cards and crafting materials are quite rare, to the point you're only going to be able to complete one or two top tier decks with a free account, without having to wait a while to gain more free gems. Gathering gems through daily missions is pretty slow, where you're looking at a maximum of 155 per day only from daily missions, which is just over a pack and a half. Paying players will be able to build many more decks and have a greater variety while playing. That's pretty much it though, there's no competitive advantage, you could just make another account and build a different deck if you wanted to. All in all, you're looking at an incredibly free-to-play friendly card game, which is a fantastic representation of how it's played physically. The game itself is well built and creates an epic atmosphere with music while you play, which I think a lot of people will prefer to playing the game in person. Not to mention the cards don't actually cost any money. And I think that is why you should play Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I do hope you enjoyed this look at Master Duel. Feel free to leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you want to see more why you should play content as it releases. Thank you to the channel members and Patreon pledges for supporting what I do, all of whom get access to these videos two days before public release. Thank you very much for watching, and you have a wonderful day.